Caribbean Soul School of the Highest Learning. First of all, this is a school and not a church. Neither are we associated with any religious organizations, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination you have taught in the world today. Now, this school was established in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kenley, who had a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. And the charts you see pictorially illustrated are results of that divine vision and revelation. I will be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, which is once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is thus from a source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh taking on a super incorporeal shape and form within himself, known as the word of Son, is Elohim. Now, super incorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in divine vision and revelation, as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when a Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators have come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim manifested in the physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as I have done, begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a super incorporeal shape and form known as the Word of Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations but one spirit as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part proved to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have titled in the world are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language and did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossibly rendered by Heavenly Father, true and correct name, Yahweh and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know, Yahweh, our Elohim, actually really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. If to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating in mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which is once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Intent to inherit eternal life now, 
in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immoral glorification in the new earth state. I watch where it is peace and I slogan to speak the truth. Hey, a prayer by Dr. Miranda Gonzalez. Scripture lesson by Dr. Vanessa Collins. This lesson be John, the first chapter. Good morning, class. Close by heart and mind for prayer this morning. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we come to you this morning being thankful for the for this divine vision and revelation that you have made us realize that you gave us to be partaker of before the foundation of the world. We're thankful for this gift for it allows us to see you as you really are and as you actually exist in us. Thankful that you have continued to purge our conscience of death causing words so that we can serve the living Elohim in us. We're thankful for this knowledge, this understanding, this wisdom, this power, this stability in this last day and time that you have foretold us of would come so that we can see, hear, and feel your ever presence. So as we gather together this morning in this manner, we ask for continued steadiness of heart and mind, for your continued mercy, your continued grace, and that you continue to give us in us those things that we need so that we can stand and withstand the wiles of the adversary. These and all blessings we ask. In thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Scripture lesson for this morning is John 1st chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated. John, first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life is the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. The true light was that which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own tribe and his own people received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of Yahweh. That is to them that believe on the name of him who was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Yahweh. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, 
the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For while the law was given by Moses, grace and truth come by Yahshua the Messiah. No man had seen the Father at any time. The only begotten Son, which was in the bosom of the Father, he shall reveal him to us. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elijah? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, as saith the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not the Messiah, nor Elijah, neither that prophet. John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were said in Beth Barber beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John seeth Yahshua coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bore record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bear record that this is the son of Yahweh. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Yahshua as he walked, he said, behold, the lamb of Yahweh. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Yahshua. Then Yahshua turned and saw them following and said unto them, what seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And in the morning he findeth his own brother Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought him to Yahshua, and when Yahshua beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Junk, thou shalt be called Kepha. The day following, Yahshua went forth into Galilee and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did right. Yahshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip says unto him, Come and see. 
Yahshua saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Yahshua answered and said unto him, Before that, that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of Elohim, thou art the king of Israel. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of Yahweh ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. John, first chapter. Hallelujah. All right. Good morning, class. My name is Carla Carter. I'll be the host slash moderator for this morning and afternoon lecture. Our first speaker will be from Millennium Soul, Dr. Joseph Cole. Joseph, if you can unmute yourself for me. Morning, class. I'm going to walk outside very quick. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, we want to do this thing. Um, as always, I'm uh, delighted to testify or witness to the things that um, Yahweh has allowed me to understand. Um, and as always, I just, uh, try to witness to the things that, that Yahweh has, uh, had me in, um, recently. And so that would be right now, um, would be the purpose in the reproductive system, um, so let's do let's do it this way. Um and you know, I guess yeah. All right, I see where it's on. So um let's get uh the Elohim book out then and go to the reproductive system. Um reproductive system section, it's in the in volume three. I, I don't know what page it is. Um, but if you can get me like the first page of the reproductive system, page twenty three. Okay. Um, I read the first paragraph. No, not the first paragraph. It's like most of the way down. Um, let me grab mine real quick. I don't get it. Um, all right. So the second paragraph. We have shown, we have thus shown that Yahweh Elohim designed and purposed that the man and the woman should reproduce, and he himself would multiply their seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the sea. And we're gonna um we're gonna start start on this from a physical perspective. We're gonna pick this up um later on, but so multiplying the earth as uh stars of heaven and sands of the sea. Now, um you may recall at least a few times where Yahweh has given the commandment to man to be fruitful and multiply, right? Um that is that is uh both again from a physical and when he said it to Adam. Um, it was a, it was a, uh, setting the tone for, um, the Messiah coming in. Um, but to be fruitful and multiply was a commandment he gave because the way he chose to carry out this purpose is through physical bodies. Um, and then, so in order to do that, he needed or wanted to, uh, have many offspring in that in that way. Um, so it told Noah the same thing. 
after the flood. Okay, read on. Yahweh repeated this commandment to multiply and replenish the earth to Noah and his family after the flood, Genesis 9 and 1. Therefore, the whole process of human reproduction is vital to the purpose of Yahweh, for it sets up a type and a shadow of the spiritual reproduction or rebirth mm -hmm. and and furthermore, there is contained in this process of reproduction all the divine wisdom and knowledge and intelligence that one could desire. All of it is in there. Now, this is just the way Yahweh did it for me. And and I've encouraged um, many times for you to ask Yahweh and just do an internal Self inventory with yourself is like, okay, well, Yahweh gave us all different strengths, right? And different interests and all those kind of things. And the reproductive system just has to be, happens to be one of my, one of my greatest. And I mean, I've been interested in sex and reproduction since, since I was a teenager. And, and it wasn't from a, um, uh, you know, sex drive standpoint, libido standpoint and all that. Um, you know, that may have had a part to play in it, but foundationally it was because I just wanted to know about it. And at that time, it had very little to do with, or it didn't really have anything to do with the, the higher meaning of it, right? And Yahweh's purpose behind it. Um, but what I would encourage you again to do is ask for that thing. What is, what is it that you're interested in? Because yeah, we got the reproductive system and all of the knowledge and wisdom is in there, like it's in your textbook. But all of the knowledge and wisdom is in everything. This entire creation is a witness to Yahweh. Um, and so you can't find anything in it that doesn't point back to it. And whether it, so if it's music, if it's if it's art, if it's uh, electricity, whatever it is that interests you to that point, dive into it and seek Yahweh in it. And and you'll be surprised what you'll find and, and the, the the testimony you'll have have from that. So, all right, back and read that part again because that's very very important. To where we're going? That last sentence. So therefore, the whole process of human reproduction is vital to the purpose of Yahweh, for it sets up a type and a shadow of the spiritual reproduction or rebirth. And furthermore, there is contained in this process of reproduction all the divine wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Read on, did I lose you? I'm sorry. There is contained in this process of reproduction all the divine wisdom and knowledge and intelligence that one could desire. That is, if one is able to understand it. Understand it for what it is, real. It is rather ironic to see how man has in past generations played down the matter of sex education and a knowledge of our reproductive organs, whereas Yahweh has hidden therein the mystery of his purpose and plan as he has done in all of his creation. And that was intentional. You get that up higher than putting that on some Christian or some Catholic school that wants to hide their kids from knowing about sex. Well, that, that's intentional because, again, all of this knowledge and wisdom of his purpose is in here. Um, and if you understand it, then you understand more about him. Well, it it is... And I say it this way: It is the adversary's job to keep um, to keep you ignorant. I put it that way. Um, it's also rather ironic when you think about it. Um, and some of y'all younger ones probably don't remember a time back when it was taboo to talk about sex on not not just in school, but even in TV, on TV and radio, music, all those kind of things. Um, and now. 
it's taken a whole nother form to where it is uh, cheapened, I guess you could say, for lack of a better term. It is um, it's used now to actually uh, make money, sell, um, sell products, um, whatever you want to whatever you want to use it for. That's what it's being used for. Um, but this is the the ultimate process where all of Yahweh's purpose is 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 shown. Right. And it's vital for his purpose. Right. And so um, to try to take it and bring it down to naught is kind of what what's being done right now. And and we'll kind of get to why that's happening that way, too, in a minute. So um, all right, finish that up. Was that the end of that? Paragraph. That's the end of that paragraph. Yes. Okay. Um. So what Yahweh showed me in this, um, in this reproductive system, and the reason I've been looking at it lately, is it is all about an up and a down. Um. It is. Uh beautiful when you understand it it's comforting i guess you could say when it, when you understand it and the whole process of one's life um is illustrated through it both physically and spiritually so we're gonna hit it at a very high level um because there's, there's all kind of nuggets in the reproductive system and it and it starts before actual intercourse reproductive system I mean it starts before um, you know even somebody meeting someone because the body is letting off pheromones and all those kind of things and you you might hear about that stuff but people actually do sense and smell pheromones off of each other right and and that that can uh, initiate sexual attraction and all those things right so it's, it's all that going on but we're not going to get into all that right now so at its at its crux, what we're gonna take it is just the development of uh, of of sexual organs and then kind of what they're pointing to, and we're just gonna kind of keep a high level. So I'm just gonna try to talk through it. I may refer back, so I guess keep your hand on the uh, um on the Elohim book, please, and I may refer back to it, but. All right, so in the when when a male child is born, all right, because you got what the male and female are pointing to is source and substance, right? And I'll I'll get to the female in just a minute, but the male is the source, is he is the origin of life. Okay. And so it all starts there with the seed and it being produced within the male body, within the testicles of, of what, what is called sperm. And so those are his reproductive cells that are constantly being re being produced in his body, even through the day he the day he passes. Um, for his entire life, he is capable of bringing forth life. So, usually before that child is born, but sometimes it's after. Um, the testicles are in up in the body; they have not descended down into the the fleshly uh, sack of scro uh, sack that you call a scrotum, right? And so when those testicles descend, and so they're in an up state, right? I'm gonna try to remember to keep talking that way. They're in an up state at that point. This is the source now. They're in an up state, and they descend down from within the the male's body down into the scrotum. They put on six layers of flesh. When they descend, six talks about is is in divine numerology means flesh or six, and so six being a coming down into the flesh, um, both numerically and literally coming down into the flesh. That's a down, okay. Once they're down, then they are um, are ready to start. Um, producing sperm and so they are connected to um, to the prostate by what you call seminal ves vesicles all right 
So when they're producing sperm down in the scrotum or down in the testicles, the, that semen ascends up the sem- cemental vesicles because they they're actually attached attached by the cemental vesicles um, to the prostate. And so after they produce the sperm, they go up this tube. That's what the vesicle essentially is. Um, and they go up to and they sit in the cemental vesicles behind the prostate. All right. Um, and so that's an up. So you had the down coming down of, um, with the testicles and then an up coming up the tubes into the cemental vesicles. The prostate talks about the Messiah, and we won't get into that right now because we're just talking about the up and down. But there's, it, it is exemplifying Yahshua Messiah, and we'll just talk about that later. Get into that later. All right. So in, in, the, in the act of sexual intercourse, they're sitting there in that cemental vesicle, and when the male ejaculates, they descend down through the prostate and down through the penis into the vagina of the woman, right? All right, the woman being source, like we talked about. You've you've probably heard many times in your life of Mother Earth. All right, here, here the creation being called Mother Earth or the Earth part of the creation being called Mother Earth. Well, it is that way because when Adam was formed, he was formed out of the dust of the ground, right? And so, um, and in the same way you talk and. Uh, Yahweh talks about this thou came from and this thou shalt return and I'm paraphrasing that and it's, it's the same thing that happens really every day when when a child is born that seed is planted into a hole in the ground think about it that woman when when she passes um, and dies that body still turns back to dust the vagina does too okay and so that that seed or sperm is planted in a hole in the ground. And in 40 weeks, the hope is that a healthy child is then formed or is formed within that hole in the ground and then born, right? All right, so back to it. So you got the semen with the sperm in it. The, the semen was added at the prostate, being uh, coming descending down through the penis and into the woman's vagina. The vagina is a depiction of, or or an expression of Egypt or the court roundabout. And and uh, let's hit that real quick. So you got three major parts of the vagina, and and even the way the textbook uh, um, talks about it, you got. The mound, so you got the labia majora of the vagina, right? And so that's flesh. And you might as well just look at all flesh as dust or dirt, right? And so it's being planted into that mound because you create mounds of dirt. Whenever you plant a seed, if you ever planted a seed before and you dig a hole, you're creating mounds of dirt on the side and then you cover it back up, right? But that's not one of the three parts I'm talking about. So you got three major parts of the vagina you got the clitoris the urethra and the vaginal orifice or the opening of the vagina itself. That is going backwards, blood, water, spirit. So what are you, what are you talking about there? So the, the blood, uh, every 28 days, a woman uh, gives her um, offering of blood through her menstrual cycle or her period, right? And so that comes through the vaginal orifice or the opening. The urethra is where a woman urinates from, right? And so that's right above the vaginal orifice. And then the clitoris is a basically a mound of nerves um, and is the most sensitive part and the most excited part of the uh, vagina, especially when the woman is uh, sexually aroused. Okay, and that's where, and it just had to stay grown here, okay? But that's where the majority of women that have, um, when they have an orgasm, it usually emanates from that clitoris, all right? And so that's the part that, again, is the most sensitive. So you got blood, the menstrual cycle, water from the urethra, which is the urine, and then the clitoris, which is the excited or the um, 
the feeling, right? And so that's spirit. Just as in the court roundabout, you got the altar of sin and sacrifice, the brazen labor, and the uh, um, cup of anointing oil, right? And so that's that's depicting that court roundabout or Egypt. Also, when when that sperm is ejaculated into the woman, that sperm is catching hell in that vag in, in that vagina. Uh, in the vaginal canal all the way up through the cervix that the woman's body sees that as an outside invader like where'd you come from like you don't you don't live here and so it's actually attacking that sperm so it's catching hell when it that sperm it the only the strongest make it through up through the cervix um and so then that kind of point to when you look at it point back to hey that when the children of Israel were in Egypt, they were catching hell. They were being uh, afflicted, right? Um, and it's crazy how. Well, I won't get into that right now. Oh, yes, I will. All right. So, if you think about it, that is the organ that is held up on the highest pedestal by the carnal mind in in our in this world today, right? Out of all the organs in in the in the human body, male or female, the vagina is held up on the highest pedestal. I just told you a second ago how sex sells. Well, it ain't it, it ain't usually the male body that, that that's the one that's getting um that's used for that. Um and so you think about that how that points to Egypt and to uh and to the court roundabout, but that is one the the organ out of all the all parts of the body that's being held up to the highest of esteem right now right um that's thought about the most um and it could be so many other organs and, and if you gonna pick one if you had any kind of real sense it would be the brain right but anyway we'll we'll go from there but but that tells you where you are right now okay or where this world is so, um, moving on. All right. So, got the sperm descending down into Egypt or into that into that vagina, right? And the ones that are strong enough, they make it up through the cervix and um, into uh, the uterus. And if a woman is ovulating in the fallopian tubes, and we can get into how the the entire woman's reproductive system like points out the tabernacle like perfectly i mean it's it's wonderful how it does that if you get a chance look that up but that's for another testimony so the ones that are strong enough make it up through the uterus and into the fallopian tube and if a woman is ovulating there is an egg or her seed there waiting okay and so you got the uh, you got the down coming through the cemental vesicles through the prostate down through the penis into the vagina or egypt and now we're we're ascending back up and we're going up, up, up through the, to the fallopian tubes. Um, and that fallopian tubes, I just say it, I put this put it this way. Fallopian tubes and the and the uterus together are look are, are a great expression of the most holy place, um, or the Ark of the Covenant and the two cherubims, right? So again, sort of a or, or it is an expression of ascending into heaven. All right. In that fallopian tube, the sperm fertilizes the egg. After that egg is fertilized, it begins to descend down into the womb or back into the uterus, where it will be nourished in the holy place. And that's what the uterus talks about. And so there's bread in the holy place, right? There is um, uh, intercession, right? with the altar of incense, all that's waiting in the holy place. So it's descending down into that where it will be nourished and developed and formed for 40 weeks. Um, when it comes down into that state, then you can, or into that level and starts to develop, that's when you can get a sonogram and you can actually see it forming in there, right? It's taking on shape and form. So that's the descension or coming down. 
All right. It again descends down when after that 40 weeks descends down through the uh through the vagina and out comes a baby, right? And you got blood, water, and spirit there when that baby is born. And even if it even if it is a C section, it's usually the bottom of the abdomen, abdomen that that, that baby is where it's cut open and that baby's pulled out from. But it but notice that blood, water, and spirit there welcoming that child because that is, as Amar already said, um three to bear witness on the earth is blood, water, and spirit. So that's the first thing that that baby witnesses welcoming into the world is that blood, water, and spirit because that baby is covered in blood and water and then it takes its first breath um, as soon as it comes out of the out of the womb. So that, again, that's a down coming down through the uh, through the vagina when that baby is born. All right. So let's talk about the up and the down. Why am I talking about the up and the down so much and, and how it's walking us through the reproductive system? <clears throat> the ups and the downs are what you go through in this life. If you talk, look at that last down, or, or look at all the downs I've, I've, just, I've just talked about. Now, you, I talked about the sperm being descending down into the vagina, right? And it is, they are afflicted. They are attacked when they come down like that, right? And then when it goes, when that sperm goes up and fertilizes the egg, then it's peaceful. If you start to see life, things come out of that. And only the strongest sperm make it to that, to that level. Again, coming down, any woman that, that that has ever had a child can tell you. And if you've been in a room with a woman that's had, had a child, you, you don't need much convincing. That is painful. That down is very, very painful. But when that baby is born, after that baby comes through and labor is over with, all kind of endorphins are releasing that woman. Because you might ask yourself, and I know I've asked myself, why would any woman want to do that more than once? Well, all kind of endorphins are releasing that woman and she, her body comes to a state of, and her mind comes to a state of, oh, this is, this is a wonderful time. And you, you see it in her as she lifts that baby up to her bosom, right? To where that baby will be nourished in her holy place, right? At her breast. <clears throat> and she has forgotten about all of the and y'all might y'all want y'all that had it might say you ain't forgot yet, but but she she starts to basically get into mothering or nurturing mode immediately, right? And all that pain, it was worth it. I'll just put it that way. And so again, coming down through the vagina, painful, travail, right? And then that baby is lifted up to to the womb or to the bosom, I mean, of that woman. And now we're nourishing. Uh, and where um, both the mother and that child are comforted, right? So up and down, up and down. And what that's doing, that's bringing forth fruit. That's reproducing spiritually in your, in your life. Well, all right, so physically first is what we're talking about now. That's reproduction, right? That's bringing forth more fruit. And I'm not done with the up and down yet. Physically, that's bringing forth more fruit, more um, more vessels to carry out Yahweh's purpose. And he's got a certain number. It ain't, it ain't just a um, um, some random thing that he's doing here. He's got a purpose and a plan, and, and it's playing out. But what that does in your life, you reproduce. When you bring forth spiritual fruit, you're going up and down, up and down. And so we, we talk about the ups, right? And you when you feel great and you're, you're at peace and you're happy um, and you are uh, content and all those great things and you're up, you know, the things are going well. And then you go down and it, and it is a inevitable as long as you are in this creation that you will go through this process up and down. And so the downs are when you are sad or you are anguished or you're depressed or you're angry. 
And whoever, no matter whoever or whatever, it seems that caused that down. At the end of the day, it's Yahweh that put you down. And he he did that for the purpose of bringing forth spiritual fruit. All right. What I mean there. Uh, prayer, the prayer fit right in. So let's go get uh because I heard it when when you always said it. John 15, I think it is. You said John 1 15. No, John 15. John 15, chapter. John 15 and 1. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every right. branch. So he's a true vine. So this is Messiah talking. He's a true vine. He's the one that's bringing forth the fruit. He is the truth. Um, and his father is the husband man. So Yahweh is the husband man or the source, the father. That's what I just said. Right. All right. So we just talked about the male is the origin, right? All right, mm -hmm. so what's the, so what is he doing? Read on. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And mm -hmm. every branch and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, talking about bringing forth fruit or reproducing, and mm -hmm. if y'all would give us time, we'll get into. The animals ain't very different from the vegetation life and how oftentimes they are uh, paralleled in your book there of trees and men, right? Or plants and men. So bearing fruit, the ones that bearing fruit, he purged it. So you know what purging a plant is? And you know, y'all know I like crowd participation. So those of y'all that got, got a green thumb, Tell, tell, tell us what purging the plant is. I can do it, but. I don't have a green thumb. Not me. <laughs> Shirley, Shirley got a Shirley, green thumb. Shirley, right, Shirley and David. I, I don't. Taking away the dead leaves and the uh, weak, weak, weak leaves or weak branches of a plant. There you go. That's it. That's right. You're cutting away the weaker, weaker leaves that are getting nourishment right but they probably if nourishment that they're not going to use because they're too weak anyway so you cut that away so that mm. the ones that the branches that are or leaves or branches that are getting good nourishment are bringing forth fruit they get more of that nourishment right the, those nutrients that the, that the plant is creating and so i know the plants create their own food like it, i know we'll do that later so um, do you think that's pleasurable for that plant? You may feel good to get piece piece of cut off a probably not. So that that being that purging though, does it so that plant can bring forth more fruit. And if you've ever done it before, you see it happen. You see that plant start to it, it whether even if it's flowers. Right, that plant will start to bring forth more flowers in in the healthier branches because those healthier branches know what to do with or, or have the means to do something with it. So that doesn't feel good to that plant, but it brings forth more fruit, and it and it's for the greater good of the purpose that that plant is there for. Whether whether it's growing oranges or just being pretty roses or whatever it is, it's greater for the purpose of that plant and for the purpose of the husband man. Right. Up and down, up and down. That doesn't feel good. You cut that plant, you cut that branch off, it's going to fall down. But that plant is going to grow up more from that. Okay? Same thing with, um, let's just move on through um, the life of the, uh, I'll tell you what, let's, let's do this first. Um I think it's the last paragraph in the reproductive system. Let's get that. And it talks about exactly what I'm saying. It's said in a slightly different way. Last paragraph of the whole 
that uh that uh, article. I mean that. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's page twenty-eight. Then at birth, the fetus descends and is born into the world and begins to grow up or ascend in the world. And throughout his youth and early adulthood, the child is in the fruition or bloom of his life. But as advancing age sets in, the downward trend begins to be manifested again. Mm -hmm. the, the Middle Ages, 50 to 70 years, signify his presence in the holy place. And after 70 signifies his presence in the outer court with death ensuing and his return back to the dust of the earth from whence he came. So if you look in, if you look at it, just picture it in your own life or, or family members that you've been around. That growing up when, when a child starts to grow up and up through their teen years, people going through puberty in the twenties and whole whole nine, right? They feel you feel almost bulletproof. You feel almost like you're gonna live forever. Like it, man, this is gonna always be this way. This 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 is awesome, right? I got all the energy I need, got all the strength that I need. Don't nothing hurt on me. And when it something does get hurt, it heals up pretty fast, get over it pretty quick, right? But those of you that have gotten older or been around people that, that have gotten older. You notice that downward trend, right? And people actually start to shrink um, as they get older, as they reach their, you know, upper elderly years. They actually start to get smaller in stature. But think about that downward trend after you hit your middle ages, right? It's painful. And he he talked about fifty to seventy years. I'm I'm forty, and I can tell you it's painful already, right? Um, where things don't heal up as fast, um, stuff hurts sometimes, and you don't really understand what you did to make it start hurting, right? Um, it's a painful down, right? But that's an up and a down along with Yahweh's purpose. Um, but think about that down. Not, not only are you physically going down, mentally and spiritually you're becoming wiser though um and you figure out how to do things um and how to handle situations um how not to be stressed how not to what things are important and what 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 are isn't um all those different things that wisdom you're ascending spiritually even though that body is descending um and mentally so all right, read on. The story does not end here. For whether we believe it or not, there is a resurrection of the dead or another upward manifestation with the redeemed being freed from the bondage of the grave and standing in the holy place or in Elohim. The Apostle John says that he saw the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yahweh and for the testimony which they held under the altar in the holy place. This represents an intermediate status in our ascent. Please be advised, this is not purgatory. And as a fulfillment of the purpose of Yahweh, both the apostles, Paul and John, agreed that the redeemed had come unto Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Mm. This completes the last downward and upward manifestation according to we our could, pattern. That's right. We we could go get that. Y'all, we're going to do that one day, Yahweh willing, um, that come to. In full context, he says... Uh, I'm going to try to repeat it. I'm going to try to re remember here. So you have not come to the mountain that might be touched, but you have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. When we talked about come to, right? So it's not physically. Um, you're becoming conscious 
of the heavenly Jerusalem or regaining consciousness of it. And that something y'all have me looking at later too. That that come to he is talked about several times in that in that run of verses there. So all right, my bad. Let me get us off track. All right, go. Keep going. This completes the last downward and upward manifestation according to our pattern. And whether one is conscious of this or not, he is on a steady journey throughout his whole life. Yes, even before he is born in the world and after mm -hmm. he has died, the journey mm -hmm. goes on according to the will of Yahweh or the pattern. And that's it. That's the up and down that is necessary. So when you go down, the next time you go down, because if you stay around here long enough, you're going back down. Or when you go up. Because that's the other, other thing you should be looking for. Is it, so when you go up, all right, let me, let me handle the down first. When you go down, understand that it's for a purpose. And it is to bring forth life or bring forth fruit. Um, that's right. Yes, it, it, it is painful. It is um, aff affliction. It is, uh, it don't feel good. But it's necessary for you to bring forth more fruit. And so and when you come back up and understand that there is an up coming behind it. And then when you come back up, you be thankful for that. But also ask, all right, well, what's this up for? What what is this about? So you know, I hey, I was I got this so I could pay my bills, or I got this promotion at work, or um uh my my child uh, recovered from the whatever sickness they had or whatever it is. Then ask Yahweh, thank him and ask him, well, all right, well, what is this for now? See, the beautiful part of it is, it's Yahweh running both sides of it. Your father is in control of that down just as much as he is of that up. And your father loves you. And so you know it's for your good. It's just no different than when your parents, <laughs> when your parents used to spank you and give you a whooping, and they say, "Well, I do it because I love you." And you, and when you're a child, you like, man, that that don't feel like love, All right? Um, but that's what it was. That's what it was for. Um, and you came out of that spanking. That spanking was the down. You came out of that spanking with a new wisdom. So you knew not to make that mistake again. And oftentimes that mistake could be something that could have killed you or hurt you. They didn't do it for no reason. So think about that and know that your father is in control of both. Um, Yahweh always, as I was back in college when he showed me this in this song. Um, and I sent it to, uh, Sent it to one of my parents not too long ago. Uh, can't remember which one, but um, Maze, Joy, and Pain. I think I talked about this before. And one of the last verses, I think the last verse in that uh, in that song is uh, where there's a flower, there's the sun and the rain, right? Because you need the sun and the rain for a flower to grow. And a flower is beautiful, right? The flower is the fruit of that plant. And you say, well, how's it? All right, we'll get into that later. The flower is the fruit of that plant. So it needed the sun and the rain to grow. But what Maze goes on to say, or what Frankie Beverly goes on to sing is, oh, but it's wonderful. They're both one and the same. Um, understand that the sun and the rain they're both Yahweh, and he's controlling both. And they're both necessary for that flower to grow and for you to grow. And I look at uh, look at Joseph. Uh, and when, and Yahweh just showed me this, because I used to always kind of look at it like, you know, you almost can look at it sometimes as, as the, uh, the manifestations that Yahweh walks through or those bodies for his purpose, as we're talking about, um, that that's written down in that book, 
it, you almost look at them as robotic and not have any emotion sometimes unless it explicitly explains it. And it actually does with Joseph eventually. But so if you look at him, they start, he, he goes through that up and down. And he, he's probably the example that, that I've seen the most. All of them do it. David, Solomon, um, all of them went, you could see their ups and downs. But Joseph is a little more pronounced. So you, you look at it and he's, He's his father's favorite, right? And so he is uh, exalted. He's he's up. Um, but then, uh, then his brothers, and I'm just gonna skip parts and get to it. His brothers ain't ain't with that. They don't, you know, they don't appreciate the dream that he had that they're gonna be bound down to him and all that. And so, um, they think about killing him. A couple of them do. Um, but what they end up doing is selling him down into Egypt. That's a down. Um, and you think about that. It doesn't talk about it at the time that Yahweh is telling that telling that story. But you got to think that didn't feel good for Joseph to get sold by his brothers down in Egypt, right? Um, That's right. And you think about right. those... Uh, that coat of many colors that was covered in blood that they took back to uh took back to Jacob, right? Or right. to Israel. Um they, that descending down into that six coats of flesh um that the Tesquas went through. All right, so Joseph getting sold down into Egypt. And he is he's in uh Potiphar's house and he is again on an ascension. He's going up because he's running the house. The only thing in the house that he couldn't, that he didn't have privy to was was his wife, Portifer's wife. All right. They go through that whole thing where she wants to lay with him and all that. And he doesn't do it. And so she accuses him of trying to rape her. All right. And so he gets cast into prison again. That's a down. All right. He, because he was he was running thing in the things in the house and now he's in jail. That's a down. Um, he's in there for a little while, I mean, for years. Um, he interprets the bakers and the butler's dream. Um, they come out, they tell, well, well, one of them tells Pharaoh, the other one got killed, but uh, one of them tells Pharaoh that hey, you know, after Pharaoh had his dream, hey, that. I met somebody in prison that interpreted my dream. And that's why I'm standing here with you today. Or he, he told me that I would be. So Pharaoh calls for him, right? And he interprets Pharaoh's dream. About seven years of famine and seven years of plenty. Or swap it around. And so, again, he is exalted. That's another ascension. Out of, out of prison. Out of that affliction. On up into where he's, he's only second to Pharaoh. And all the land of Egypt and really beyond because everybody had to come to Egypt if they wanted something to eat. And you look at that, it's an up and a down, up and a down. He has uh, a couple sons while he's in Egypt so that he's bringing forth fruit physically, right? And then he ends up feeding his family that comes down there. And they they get the best land in in, in Egypt. Right. And that's up. You think that's I mean, that's great, man. He's got all the power. He's got all the, the wealth he could ever want. Now he's feeding his family. And then he told tells him before he passes, don't leave my bones down here. Right. And so he ends up passing in Egypt. And they take his bones. And and that is, of course, setting the tone for the Messiah. But they take his bones and, and ascend on their journey. And fulfill that he he isn't buried in Egypt, right? And so that that's another ascension, right? From a physical standpoint. So that up and down, constant up and down. And if if you go um to where he was he named uh Manasseh and Ephraim. If we could get that real quick, uh uh but he tells him he tells you why he named them. What he named him. 
trying to think of something that you could search besides Manasseh's name. I think I got it in my book here. Hold on. And I'm just showing you that Morning. his up and down. What's that? I was thinking it was 48. 48. Uh, I see. It's 41 and uh, 50. Genesis 41 and 50. Unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Port Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for Elohim has lifted me above all my toil and all my father's house. So Elohim pulled him back up, lifted him up beyond all his toil and his father's house. So he had, he went through some toil. Like I said, it didn't feel good, and it it done just because it doesn't explicitly say it. He was going through it. Read on. The name of the second called he Ephraim. For Elohim had caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Elohim has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. We just talked about all that affliction that sperm go through, right? But that brings forth fruit. The affliction that he goes, that, that Joseph went through. He was fruitful in that though. That's what it and, and and what caused him to do that, right? Elohim caused him to do that, or Yahweh caused him to go through that affliction, but then be fruitful in that. Right. That's right. That up and down, up and down is necessary because you're carrying out a purpose. You ain't here to be happy. If you if it was always good here, then you wouldn't want to leave. And this ain't home. This ain't the final destination. It, I ain't gonna say it like that. But this ain't this ain't it. The world as as you, you see it through your carnal mind. And if that was always good, you would never want to leave it. Um, and so that up and down is carrying out a purpose. Um, let's get uh one more thing though. Well, two more things I want to hit. But Psalm one thirty nine. The other other won't be a scripture. Cause this this one did it for me a long time ago with uh with Yahweh and um freedom, put it that way. Psalms one thirty nine. Mm -hmm. O Yahweh, O Yahweh, thou hast searched me and known me. Known me. One is so you were one with me. Know me. Think of the word no. K N O W. I know how we look we looked that up for years and how that means to intercourse with. Um and so intercourse brings brings about fruit. So you have known me, Yahweh. Read on. I know it's my down city and mine uprising. Mm-hmm. Open up. You, 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 and you you know it, so you're one with it. You know my up and down, Yahweh. You're one with it. Read on. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Mm -hmm. Thou compasses my path and my lying down, and art that, acquainted with. You know what that means? You compasses my path, my path, and my lying down. It. It's the root word of that is compass. You're setting the direction for my line down and my path. You're you're directing that. Read on. And art acquainted with all my ways. Mm. For there is 
for there oh. for there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Yahweh, thou knowest it all together. Mm -hmm. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge mm -hmm. is too such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, <laughs> and I cannot attain unto it. Mm. You know, only, uh, but yeah, Paul told you he was caught up to the third heaven. It, it's David singing, writing a song here, um, testifying to the same thing. Read on. Whither shall I go Maybe from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Mm -hmm. If I ascend up into the heavens, heaven, thou art there. If I go up, you're there. That's why I said when you go up, ask him, what's it for? Thank him, because he's there. And ask him, well, what's this for while we're here? Read on. If I make my bed in shoal or hell, behold, thou art there. Wait a minute. <laughs> Yahweh's in heaven and is in hell. Mm. Gonna, That's right. Y'all be grown to take this now. That's right. All right now. He's all that there is. What do you think hell is? If I make my bed in hell, you're there. So again, like we talked about, since we're here. All right, Papa, why, what's this about? What's this for? When you acknowledge him, that's when you can start to move up. All your ways. But the peaceful part, again, is that he's in heaven and he's in hell. Your father is with you even when you're in hell. Mm -hmm. When you're catching hell in your mind, hell is a state of consciousness. It's like heaven is. And so when you're there, He's there with you. That's right. The sun, and the sun and the rain are one and the same. All right now. Read on a little bit more on that. I'm first. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say surely the darkness Mm -hmm. the comforter. That should be comforting for you. His hand is with you. Because look, son, you got to go up and down. Accept that. But I'm here with you. That's the comforting part. And to be honest about it, I'm the one going through it. Call it what it really is. That's right. All right. Um, the next couple of verses. Yeah, go ahead. 11 first. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, mm -hmm. the darkness, mm -hmm. yea, the darkness had hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness <laughs> and the light are both a light to thee. Man, well, how about that? <laughs> the darkness and the light are both the light. Uh, are both the it's same. Right. That's right. They're the same. They're the right. same. That's right. That's right. It's wonderful when you understand it. Same. And that's what, what Dr. Kendall was writing in that, um, in that reproductive system. When you understand this reproductive system and this purpose. It's wonderful. It's all the knowledge and wisdom you need because that knowledge and wisdom is what keeps you stable. When you go down, you know that it was necessary anyway. And that is for a greater purpose for you to come back up and bring forth more fruit. That That is what keeps you stable. Is that your father is in hell with you, if you will. He, uh, yeah, he is hell itself. We already said it. Um, that's what keeps you stable. And one other thing I want to hit on the uh, re reproductive system real quick <clears throat> for you to kind of know where you are 
in this creation. And I hope this is comforting as well in the purpose. So um, as a woman grows older and a woman is, like we talked about before, is is an expression of the greater creation or manifestation of it, right? And so, like we talked about Mother Earth. Um, and so, if you look at uh, a woman, let me give a couple examples here. A woman has a finite amount of time that she's able to bring forth fruit or bring forth offspring. All right, and so kicks in around puberty when her menstrual cycle starts and she begins to ovulate and then it goes up through menopause. Same thing with this with this earth that we're on. <clears throat> it has a finite number of resources in order to um, um, support life and bring forth life. <clears throat> and you hear scientists and all that kind of stuff on the news all the time like, hey, if we use up all these natural resources, we only got so many trees, we only got so much uh, natural gas, we only got so much uh, lithium ion to make batteries, lithium to make lithium ion batteries, um, all those different things, right? Um, so much silicon, so much silicon, all that kind of stuff. It has a finite amount of of minerals and uh, and resources in it. And so once it comes to that point to where it's not able to bring forth or once a woman, let's go there first, come to the point where she's not able to bring forth fruit anymore. She hits what you call menopause. In menopause, she stops having her um, menstrual cycle every 28 days or her showing the blood. Um, at that same time, so she's not able to bring forth fruit anymore. And, uh, well, let me do that. Let me hit that first. If you uh, have kept up with the news um, off and on for the past, I would say, five or six years, maybe 10, um, you have maybe heard that not only in America, but throughout the world, um, the reproduction rate of humans has slowed dramatically to a point of alarm in some countries and even some states in the United States. Um, in China, at one point, and I don't know if they're still doing it, they were actually trying to pay people to have babies. Um, other civilizations have faced some of the same stuff. In America, the same way. Um, there are some states that are offering incentives for people to move to their state and have children. Um, I think Maine is one of them. And you can look that up and um, look at what they're doing. But, but basically, they see that their population is aging and well, you can't sustain life if you have an aging population and these people are getting to where they can't have kids. They also can't work, and so they can't produce for the state, right? And they can't make goods and services and all those kind of things. So that's alarming to a state government, and to a to a federal government. Um, what does that tell you a little bit about where we are? This earth is getting to where, and people are having uh, less children, because partially they're having less sex. Partially because they haven't left less social interaction. I um, also saw another article where Generation Z, which is like I think they're anywhere between like the early teens and in their twenties now, <clears throat> um, they don't interact with people or others as much as previous generations did, and so they um, have been having waiting longer to have sex, having less sex, because the way they interact is through the internet, through their phone, right? They text, they use social media, all those different things. And so that's where they get their um, social uh, needs filled, if you will, or at least they, they think that. Um, so 
it stands to reason that Yahweh said to be fruitful and multiply. And that commandment is starting to get reneged on. And you remember the Messiah at the fig tree and he was hungry. He ran up to the fig tree and it didn't have any fruit. What did he do to it? He cursed it. And that was it for that fig tree. Well, let me give you another, if that, if that witness ain't enough for you, because you need two anyway. What's one symptom that a woman has when she begins menopause, the most pronounced and most talked about one? I'm looking for proud participation. Hot flashes. Hot flashes. Hot flashes. And she is none too happy when she's having hot flashes, typically. Um, it's uncomfortable. Uh, and even the, the end result of it, the back end of it, is often uncomfortable, too, when the hot flash ends. And now the woman has used up a lot of the heat in her body. And now she's in a cold sweat sometimes. Look at this earth. And we've been talking about climate change and global warming and all that for decades now. Well, we're out here at it, and people ain't denying it like they used to. You haven't heard the Republicans talking about what well, climate change is a myth in the past couple of years. You know why? Because it is becoming undeniable with all of the you can say what you want. I remember when wearing large coats in October when I was growing up. And now you can wear shorts in October. Um, I've worn shorts in January. I'm pretty sure over, over the past couple of years is one day or another. Um, and the more violent storms that have been had. We ain't just talking hurricanes. We're talking thunderstorms that are killing people destroying property that is because this earth has become warmer the even so much so that <laughs> i heard in the news on the news last week global warming and you know how heat causes things to expand well the earth has gotten fatter around the equator scientists have have pointed out um that changes the the speed at which the earth spins but that's neither here nor on what we're talking about now the earth has gotten bigger and so that's proof that the that the earth is warmer and it's uh yeah it's bloated right i'm not saying when it meant probably bloated but i'm just to get where i'm going so look at where you are when when a woman comes to, into menopause, she's reached her older years. She's not bringing forth fruit. She's having hot flashes. And she is nearing the end of her life. If your eyes are open, then you see those things here now. This earth is, is ending or coming near. And I'm not putting no date on it. And I'm not telling you start counting. I'm telling you to pay attention or encouraging you to pay attention. That we're coming to the point to where this earth has just about fulfilled its purpose. Um, when it starts bringing forth fruit, that's when you know. I got to. Yeah. So. Um, I just encourage you to keep your eyes open, both on that, but also on the ups and the downs. And understand that they're necessary and you can know right now that a down is coming or if you're down right now you can know that an up is coming your thing is to be conscious and awake to where you can ask your father or acknowledge your father in either state um so that's a little bit. And, and again, th there's so much more in the reproductive system that can be uh, gotten into. It is it is a wonderful witness um, to uh, to Yahweh's purpose. Um, there's things that, like I said, we just hit it at a high level, but there's things um, if you look at the mosaic track and, and all those things, it, it fits in perfectly. But um, 
just for the continuity of thought, we'll kind of leave it where it is right now. So um, I hope something was was uh, something found uh, good soil in your heart and mind on from what y'all had to share and with these few words. I think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, that was a thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, we have about thirty minutes left. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I'll take the last thirty minutes in. Um, good morning again, everybody. My name is Carla Carter again. I thoroughly enjoyed the words of the previous speaker. Um, so many things that Yahweh was showing me with all and all of that, and I'll see which way Yahweh takes us to um conclude this morning's lecture. Um, the last thing the first speaker was referring to, as far as like the menopause and things like that, the whole if you look at the process, what the speaker was talking about with the up and down. And in the beginning, when Yahweh gave the commandment to Adam to be fruitful and multiply, in order for that to happen, there had to be a down in order for that to happen. Just like the testicles, there had to be a down. Same thing with the eggs. The eggs have to come down the floor. There had to be a down. But there was not a mate found suitable or help meat found suitable for Adam. And so Yahweh caused a deep sleep to fall upon a man. He took the ribs and the woman of the man and made the woman. The woman was taken out of the man for the purpose of being fruitful and multiplying for Yahweh's purpose. That was the whole purpose of the woman being taken out of the man um, in order for them to fulfill the commandment that Yahweh had given him to be fruitful and multiply. Now, at the end of that transition, and you can look at a whole bunch of different numbers and things like that, with a woman's menstrual cycle and so forth and so on, it normally starts around the age of, as early as the age of nine and 10 years old in a woman, and it stops roughly around 50, which gives you approximately about 40 years that a woman has to be able to reproduce. No wonder it's 40 years, but also during the time of ovulation of a woman, the way that process works, after the show of blood, after the first day, of the menstrual cycle, after the eggs come forth and they're not fertilized and they pass on through the uterine walls and the blood of the uterine walls comes through the vagina, which is the menstrual cycle, the offering up of blood or offering up those dead eggs that were not fertilized, at the start of that very first day of the show of blood, then there is a count and it starts the 10th day after that, the 10th day, and it's held over to the 14th day when a woman is ovulating or the eggs are present in order for the woman to be able to be um, become pregnant or for the seed to be able to impregnate the eggs. 10th through the 14th day. Does that sound for me? Had to take the lamb out on the 10th day, hold it over to the 14th day. And so there's a four-day window when during the menstruation every 28 days, a four-day window when a woman can actually get pregnant. Now, when you look at the process in which Yahweh had this whole purpose operating through the ages and dispensations and so forth and so on, after the 4,000th year, after the Messiah came, comes in, well, before I even get to that point. And so after that process, those 40 years pass, and then menopause comes, menopause happens when a woman's ovaries stop producing hormones and um, the main hormone that stopped being produced is estrogen. Now, mind you, a woman's body has estrogen and testosterone in it. So a man does too. A man has more testosterone than estrogen, but the process of men all pause or men all pause is when the body stops producing estrogen which causes the hot flashes and so forth and so on, and she's no longer able to reproduce. And so the woman's estrogen levels decrease where the testosterone 
takes over. That's why when women get a little older, they start getting mustaches and uh, hair on their face or whatever. Why is that? Because the testosterone levels are higher than the estrogen levels. The woman has to go back to the man, back into the man. From a natural standpoint, that's that's like a, the type and shadow of that, right? Because that's where she came from. But when you look at the whole purpose that the first speaker was talking about of the ups and the downs, ups and downs, ups and downs, was to bring forth fruit. What are we supposed to do with those fruits? And that's the last part of the lecture that I want to focus on is what are we supposed to be doing with the fruit in the first place? Now, Yahweh told Adam of all the trees of the garden, he can freely eat. But the tree that's in the midst of the garden, don't touch that one. The tree of knowledge is an evil. Don't, don't eat of it. Don't even touch it. Because in the day that you do, you should die to death. And so when that process happened, and they did partake of the tree that Yahweh told them not to, Yahweh cursed the ground for Adam's sake. And so now the ground is cursed, right? And so, of course, through the process of time, when Cain and Abel came on the scene and they were supposed to offer up sacrifices unto Yahweh, Yahweh did not accept Cain's sacrifice, which was the first fruit of the ground, because the ground was cursed still. Yahweh had not removed that curse yet, right, from a natural standpoint. Then at the end of that age, Yahweh had Noah to come on the scene. Noah's name means comforter. And the purpose of Yahweh bringing Noah in at the end of that age or the comforter in at the end of that age was for what reason? Let's read it real quick in Genesis, the fifth chapter, I believe it is. Fifth chapter, eighth chapter, one of them, um, when Noah came forth. Is it five? Ah, uh, okay, five. Mm -hmm. All right, five and 28. Okay, uh, Genesis 5, 28. Mm -hmm. And Lamech lived in 180 and two years and begot a son. And he called mm -hmm. his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which Yahweh hath cursed. So Noah, at the end of that age, was supposed to come in and comfort them concerning their work because Yahweh told Adam, <clears throat> because he had done, listened to his wife and partook of the tree that he was not supposed to take of, he cursed the ground by Adam's sake. He said, for, uh, by the sweat of thy brow shall thou till the soil. Um, he had to work for his food. And so Noah, the comfort at the end of the age, was supposed to come in and comfort them concerning the, um, their work of their hands because of the ground which Yahweh had cursed. And so when Noah came in and preached death, fair resurrection, blood, what a spirit 40 at the end of that age, those that believed entered into the ark and there was another ascension. And then once they came out of the ark and Yahweh made the covenant with them, then the curse of the ground was removed. And so then afterwards, that's when Yahweh, um, time passed on, whatever, whatever, Yahweh told Israel to offer the first fruit of the ground unto Yahweh. What are we talking about? So the up and down, up and down, up and down definitely is to produce fruit. Same thing with the reproductive system. The up and down, up and down is to produce seed, right? But what is the purpose of the seed or the purpose of the fruit? Why did Yahweh desire a seed in the first place? What was the whole point of it? To do what? What's, what's Yahweh's purpose? Talk about all the time. To glorify, to glorify praise and honor to glorify and praise, honor Yahweh. That was the whole purpose for them to bring forth seed in the first place, which we'll get to that in just a second. So Yahweh showed forth his purpose through Abraham and the children of Israel. Now, the first speaker hit on it. We're going to go into a little bit more detail of it, possibly. I'm not sure how Yahweh plans to do it, but we'll see, and we'll go ahead and conclude it. So in this process, that Yahweh had brought forth. 
you have Abraham or Abram starting in Canaan land. He called him out of Ur of the Chaldees and showed him um, the land of Canaan. And he gave him a promise or he gave him a declaration that he was going to give him a seed, multiply his seed as the sands of the sea stars of heaven and know for sure that they're going to have to go down into a land that's not there, be placed in bondage for a period of time after which I, Yahweh, 400 years actually, 400, after I, Yahweh, will come in and deliver them out and bring them to this land, the good land, so forth and so on. But he told Abram he was going to make his name great, right? Make his name great. Yahweh's telling his story through Abram. And so in the 15th chapter of Genesis, now, Yahweh planted that seed in the 12th chapter of Genesis before Abram even desired a seed. But in the 15th chapter of Genesis, Abram desired a seed. And he asked Yahweh, Yahweh, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? What are you looking for a child for in the first place? To leave my inheritance to, so that they can offer, or so they can be raised up in my name and carry out the rest of their days in my name. That was the whole point, purpose. And so Yahweh told Abram, this shall not be thine heir, but there shall come forth one out of thine own vows. He shall be thine heir. And he took, looked to heaven, count the stars. If you can number the stars, you can number your seed. But know for sure, though, that the seed that I'm going to give you shall go into a land that's not there if you place in the bunch for a period of 400 years after which I, Yahweh, will come in and deliver them out. And they shall come out. The nation that they shall, they shall serve, because they have to serve that nation, the nation that they shall serve, I, Yahweh, will judge that nation. But they shall come out with great substance. What was the point of them come, going down to come out with great substance? What were they supposed to do with that substance? They were supposed to worship Yahweh with the substance. The whole purpose of them him taking them down in the first place was for them to come out with great substance to worship Yahweh. The whole point of it is for you to glorify Yahweh, the ups and the downs, the ups and the downs, because like the first last first speaker just got to showing was that Yahweh was encompassing all of it. He directed all of it for what end? To what end, though? For you to glorify him so that he can get the glory because you will realize at the end of the day, it's not you going through it in the first place. It's Yahweh doing all of it. And so it's Yahweh getting the glory. And so then, when he gave unto Abram, Isaac in his old age, because like the first thing we talked about, the man can, there's no point in a man's life where he cannot produce or reproduce. Not one point in his life. The woman is the one that's limited. And there's a time frame on the woman. What is that talking about? The creation. There's a limit to the creation, but there's no limit to the source or the, or the, the man. Because at the end of the day, the end was declared from the beginning. Yahweh alone and by himself, or the source alone and by himself in the beginning, and it's Yahweh alone and by himself in the end. But the time frame is put on the creation, though. And so, oh, I'm going to get sidetracked. So then, gave unto Abram Isaac, when the process of Sarah, after the flesh, had already passed for her being able to bring forth the child physically so. And so this promised seed that Yahweh had to give unto Abram had to come with a time where they had to give Yahweh the glory. Because if you promise me something, Yahweh, then Yahweh's going to make sure that you know by all means it was him and him alone. He will make everything else fail. For what? To hurt you? To cause you to stress and have anxiety? Absolutely not. For you to glorify him. So if Yahweh told you that he was going to give this to you or give that to you or promise you this or promise you that, when the time comes when you think it's supposed to come this way and it does not, it's not for you to fall out and lose consciousness. It's for you to stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. So he gave one to Abram Isaac. Isaac was put with Rebecca at the age of 40 years old 
he took his wife Rebecca after his three years after his mother Sarah had passed away, and he was comforted of his wife Rebecca. But Rebecca was barren too. She couldn't bring forth seed after the flesh. What are you talking about, Yahweh? Because I'm telling you that this does not come by the will of man, but every word that proceedeth out of Yahweh's mouth shall come to pass. I will purpose it. I will also bring it to pass. So Rebecca, I entreated Yahweh for Rebecca. When Rebecca ended up pregnant, and she had all the stuff going on with Isaac, um, Jacob and Esau in her womb, warring. She inquired of Yahweh, what is going on inside of me? They didn't have sonograms back then. Yahweh told her, the elder shall serve the younger. You were pregnant with twins. The elder shall serve the younger. And so when Jacob and Esau, Jacob and Esau came forth, Yahweh had a purpose in operation. Now, after the flesh, According to the way the tradition was, Esau was supposed to have the birthright, and Esau was the one that was supposed to have the the um the rule or the right, however you say it, the birthright and the what else did he say? Blessing, excuse me, the blessing. I can't think of the blessing after the flesh now. But Yahweh does not look at the flesh. Yahweh judges the man's heart. So Yahweh said before ever ch either child was born, neither had done any good or evil. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. And so it does not matter what the flesh says that's supposed to go on. Yahweh gave the blessing unto Jacob. Esau sold his birthright for a morsel of bread because it meant nothing to him. Absolutely nothing. And so then... The purpose goes on. He re Jacob receives a blessing. His mother sent him to her brother's house. That's when he uh, had Leah and Rachel to be his wives and had the 12 uh, sons of Jacob, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. They're back on their way back to Canaan land again, as an up and a down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So they're back to Canaan land. Yahweh causes a famine because he promised Abraham, know for sure that your seed so go down in the land. It's not there. It's placed in the bunch for a period of 400 years. So Yahweh calls a famine in the land. But before then, Joseph had to be the forerunner and go down like the first he can talk about and prepare a place for them. That where he was, they could be there also. And so when the famine came, just like Yahweh showed Pharaoh in the dream or showed uh, Pharaoh and Joseph, Yahweh interpreted the dream through Joseph, Yahweh had already prepared a place that where Joseph was, they can be there too. So all the food and things that they were going to need to survive, Yahweh had already prepared it for them way before then. And so when they had to come down, those 70 souls migrated down into Egypt. 70 souls migrated down into Egypt, right? And then, of course, you talk, the first thing to talk about the testicles having to drop or the seed having to fall into the sack or the scrotum, which is covered with six layers of flesh, this is the beginning of Yahweh bringing forth what he had told Abraham or promised Abraham. This is the beginning of that, right? And it happened way before, um, you know, the coming together and so forth and so on. So the, the seed comes down, right? Just like the first, second, it's like the third day, cedar vegetation went on to fruition and so forth and so on. So, Seed comes down into Egypt. Pharaoh that knew Joseph died off. Joseph died off. Um, all the old heads died off. And the Pharaoh was raised up that did not know Joseph that began to evilly entreat the children of Israel, just like Yahweh said. The more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. In one ejaculation, how many sperm comes from comes out through the semen? Is six is it six million? I can't remember. It's six something. It's 600,000, 6 million. So it's a whole, it's six something as far as how many sperm come, uh, how many feet, how many sperm are in one um, ejaculation of semen. Anyway, and so like the first thing you talked about, those um, sperm have to catch hell throughout that process because the sperm are fighting to get to the egg, but only one makes it in. And when that sperm makes it in, the tail is cut off. 
But the sperm, you look at sperm, it's a head and a tail. You got a head and you got a tail. Head and tail. Once the sperm makes it in, the tail is cut off and something else, and there's a flash of light. That's a whole other point. I'm not there yet. So then, of course, things had to transpire. They had to be evil and treated, just like the word of Yahweh told Abraham they would be. And then at the, in the process of time, at the end of that 400th year, just like Yahweh promised, Yahweh surely visited them at the end of that 400th year, and Yahweh made a way out of no way. Now, during that process, Moses was raised up, so forth and so on. He went through all the things he had to go through, up and down with him, up and down with him. He goes um, into the land of Midian, had to come back down in order to go back up, had to come back down. It's a whole bunch of up and downs, up and downs, up and downs. That's not my point. So at the end of the 400 years, Yahweh sent Moses and Aaron back down into Egypt with Yahweh's name, the rod, and three signs that Yahweh had showed unto Moses at the burning bush, which were blood, water, spirit. Um, and, and it was 40 years later after Moses departed from Egypt when he sent him down there. And so you got Moses coming down, Aaron coming down, so forth and so on, in order to tell Pharaoh that Yahweh said, let his son, singular, Israel go. If not, I'll kill your son, even your first one. Let me get to my point. So Yahweh devastated Egypt down there, 10 devastating plagues, so forth and so on. They had to put the blood of the lamb on the door. All those had the lamb. The seed of Yahweh had to come up to and through the Red Sea, just like Yahweh told them to. Now, in the process of reproduction, we talked about this a little bit um, a few classes ago, that once that process takes place, you have the zygote, um, the fertilized egg. And then it goes through something called a fetus stage or whatever. And so while they're in this state here in the wilderness, they constantly feed us, feed us, feed us, feed us, a fetus. They're constantly asking how to feed them. And so Yahweh had to rain down manna from heaven, feed them. They had to grow. And um, Yahweh had to make his ways known to them and his acts to the, known to Moses, acts to the children of Israel. So he's constantly um, overturning, overturning, overturning. And so the way a baby's produced, you have the division of cells, um, the, the, myos, the meiosis and the mitosis going on inside the mother's womb with those cells dividing. Uh, some cells become the eyes, the lungs, the heart, so forth and so on, until that baby is formed at the end of 40 weeks. They had to wander around in the wilderness for 40 years before Yahweh um, allowed them to go into the promised land. But all of those who did not believe those weak or dead cells had to be gotten rid of or die off in order for the strong to make it on over into the promised land. And only the strongest sperm survive, right? And so all that process going on. And so then when it was time for them to go to and through the river Jordan, Yahweh had Moses um, to show Israel Yahshua, the son of Nun, that he was going to be the one. He so-called passed the torch to him. He's the one that's going to take you on over into the promised land. And so they had to be circumcised because the ones that were um, given a golden Canaan land, they had not been circumcised in the wilderness. So there had to be another show of blood. There had to be water, the spirit, so forth and so on. All these things had to transpire at River Jordan in order for them to go into the um, entertainer man, right? And so all that, that had to go on, transpire, so forth and so on. Now, the substance that they came out of Egypt with, because they had to be, go down into the land of Egypt and had to go through absolutely, absolute pure hell, turmoil, affliction constantly. And they did make that out with great substance. That same substance that they made it out there with some of them took part of that substance and made that golden calf and start worshiping the golden calf and Yahweh killed them off for it. And then you had uh, the same substance where Yahweh used to make the vessels in the tabernacle for them to worship and serve Yahweh. Same substance, right? And so the whole point of all of that, when we look at the process of which Yahweh had to 
transpire in order to bring forth the Messiah. Now, at once they got out here to um, in the wilderness, and they got to Mount Sinai, and Yahweh spoke the law down to Israel, and they said, "All that Yahweh said, we will do, and be obedient." And he gave them um, the carnal ordinances and this law and commandments, so forth and so on, at the, um, at Mount Sinai. First, people talk about that you come to the mount can't be touched. We're, we're instituting it right now. So they were at the mount that could be touched. And if a, a beast touched the mount, he had to be thrust through with the dark. So all so forth and so on. So he gave them the law here at Mount Sinai. They said, all that Yahweh said, we will do and be obedient. Moses sprinkled the blood and water on the people, the book, um, and on the um, so forth and so on. So Moses married Israel to Yahweh at Mount Sinai. All right. So then, if you look at the process of which Yahweh worked with Israel through this process, the same lineage that the Messiah came through came by way of something very similar to what I'm going to show you in just a second. So the tra traditionally, the way it worked in Israel, because of the inheritance that Yahweh had given them, they had to marry or stay within their tribes in order to keep their inheritance um, that Yahweh had given them, right? So you had the son of Judah. You had Judah. You had um, all the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 of Israel. Judah was the fourth tribe or the kingship tribe. Now, Judah had sons, and one of his sons was very, he did evil in the sight of Yahweh, which was married to Tamar. Now, Yahweh killed him because of what he had done. And so because of him being the oldest son and the inheritance being his, then his next of kin or his brother was supposed to marry Tamar, go in unto Tamar and have a child with Tamar to raise up that child in the dead brother's name. And so when he went in unto Tamar, what he did was instead of him actually impregnating her, he actually spilled it on the ground. And Yahweh killed him because of it. And so Judah had a younger son that wasn't old enough yet to marry Tamar. So he told Tamar, okay, well, if you, you know, stay a widow, when my oldest son gets, when my youngest son gets old enough, I will marry him to you so that, you know, you can keep the inheritance and so forth and so on and raise feed up until you're a dead husband. But Judah didn't do that. He ended up giving his oldest son to someone else and Tamar found out about it. So what Tamar did, she took off her widow clothes, put on harlot clothing, and went into the market where Judah used to always go and drink with his friends and so forth and so on. And Judah got drunk and Tamar um, laid with him. He didn't know it was Tamar at the time, laid with him. And because he thought that she was a whore, so he was going to pay her, but he didn't have anything with him to pay her with. And so he told her, I'll send a sheep by one of my men. She was like, no, just in case you don't pay me, give me your bracelet and your staff and I'll hold on to this until you actually pay me. And so he said, okay, cool. So they went their way. When he sent his friend back to find the whore that he had laid with, they couldn't find anybody. And they were like, there, was, there never was a whore in this place. What are you talking about? Now Judas, he's like, what? And so when they found out later on that Tamar was pregnant, Judas said that she had played the whore and that they were going to put her to death because she didn't keep herself like she said she was. And then Tamar said, okay, well, the man who these bracelets and this staff belongs to, that's the man that I'm pregnant by. And so that's when Judah was like, wow, she was more righteous than I was then because I didn't give her my oldest, my youngest son, like I said I would. And so she preserved seed for her dead husband herself. And so the child that she had is the same lineage, um, which was Perez, Perez, I think, Perez, the same lineage that Perez came from was where Boaz came from. Trying to get to the point. So then Boaz came forth from um, that lineage of Tamar and Judah, the kingship tribe now. And so Boaz, if you know the story of Ruth and Boaz, okay, Naomi was um, of the tribe of Judah, but she had went into the land of Moab with her husband. Her husband died. She had two sons that was married to Ruth and married to another Moabite woman, and her two sons died. And so she had, she was too old to have children. And so she had nobody else to raise up seed 
to her dead husband or to her, her children, her sons. Because her sons had their own inheritance too. And so she went to go back to her um her um her lineage or back to Judah, back from Judah, to just die. And so Ruth wanted to go with Naomi. Naomi was like, No, stay here, you know, find somebody else to marry. And Ruth said, No, I I would much rather serve Yahweh than to serve the God of the Moabites. I'm gonna go with you. So Ruth went with Naomi back to the land of Judah. And so long story short, um Boaz and Ruth ended up meeting up. And because Boaz was not the next of kin first, he had to actually go to all of the next of kin to Naomi's um, dead son, Ruth's husband, to see if anybody else wanted to marry her to raise up seed to her dead husband for that inheritance. Nobody else wanted to do it. They wanted to raise up seed for their own inheritance. So Boaz agreed to marry Ruth to bring forth seed to her dead husband. And through the lineage of Boaz and Ruth, came David. And through, of course, the lineage of David came Yahshua the Messiah. All of that. And so when Yahweh get married Israel back under the law and gave them that natural, physical law, court ordinances and commandments as a type and a shadow, it talks about over there, matter of fact, get Romans the seventh chapter. Because the whole point was to raise up seed or children to the dead husband for the inheritance or raise up seed to the name of the, the husband for the inheritance. That was the whole point of Boaz, Mary, and Ruth to raise up seed for her dead husband for the inheritance that they had already received. He gave up his inheritance in order to marry Ruth to bring up seed unto her dead husband for that inheritance. Okay, so if we go to Romans, the seventh chapter, Romans seven chapter Romans seven. Seven and one. Seven and one. Romans seven and one. Mm -hmm. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Mm -hmm. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So Pause. then. Pause. So when Israel married Yahweh at that mount, they were bound to that natural carnal ordinances or that, that law. They were bound to that law to keep it as long as their husband was alive. Right, they married Yahweh. Read. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Mm -hmm. Where, wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of the Messiah. So then, is Israel, so then Israel had become dead to that law that was spoken from Mount Sinai back there by the body of the Messiah. Yahweh manifested in the flesh as Yahshua, and died to free them from that original law. Their husband died on the cross for them to free them from that law. And so when Yahshua, when Yahweh raised Yahshua from the dead, now they're married to another, which is Yahshua, to do what? Read. That ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. So then you can bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. The downs are likened to a death and a burial. The ups are likened to a resurrection. It's a death, burial, resurrection, death, burial, resurrection, death, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And the down is for what reason? So that when you come back up a resurrection, you can bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. What do we do with that fruit? Hebrews 13 chapter. Mm 
Hebrews 13 and 1. Let brotherly love. Well, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews 13 and 1. Let brotherly love continue, but be not forgetful to enter. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember them that are in the are, that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, if the bed be undefiled. But, but whoremongers and adulterers, Yahweh will judge. Let your conduct be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Mm. So, mm -hmm. so let, let that, wait a minute, let that soak in. <laughs> let your conduct be without covetousness. Stop coveting a moment somebody else have and looking outside of yourself as if you're not satisfied with what you have. Be content with the things that you have and the things that you don't have. Because it's, the re it's Yahweh that gives to all of us. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. You don't have to be in a particular place. You don't have to have a certain amount of money. You don't have to be with a certain person or to be happy. Right. That's right. That's a trick of the adversary. That's right. Read. Read. That's not even my point. Read. I know. I know. So that we may boldly say, Yahweh is our key, is our helper. And so I that's will. That's the reason why. That's why right there. That's why we go through the ups and the downs. So we can boldly say, without a shadow of a doubt, okay. Yahweh is my helper. Nobody okay. else. Not mama, daddy, money, me, myself, I, nothing else can help you. Nobody else can save you. That's why you go through the ups and the downs, so that you can bring forth fruit unto Yahweh to give him all the praise, glory, and honor. Because you can boldly say now, that even when you're down, you can say it. You can boldly That's say right. this when you're down, not That's when right. you're up. You can boldly say this when you're down. I know out of this flesh, my Redeemer lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that we may boldly say, Yahweh is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I will not fear when I invoke the name of Yahweh to these demons that don't know his name, how mm -hmm. they're going to feel about me, what they're going to mm -hmm. do to me, if they're going to fire me or not, if they're not going to want to talk to me anymore, if they're going to be offended by me saying my father's name. I'm offended when they say God and Lord. You right. think I care if they get offended when I say Yahweh? Not Yahweh at all. is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Read. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of Yahweh, whose faith follow, considering the object of their of their behavior. Yahshua the Messiah, the same yesterday and today and forever. The same yesterday, today and forever. The truth is the same yesterday, today and forever. The wisdom, right. knowledge, and revelation of Yahweh's purpose is the same yesterday, today, mm -hmm. and forever. The whole purpose of Yahweh from start to finish is for Yahweh to be glorified and magnified in his son all day, every day. Read. Be not carried about with various and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with dieting, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Not no eat no Lord's supper, or not with not with dieting with meat. Be not carried away with diverse and strange doctrines. Not just doctrines out there with Jehovah Witnesses. No, the doctrines that come up in your own mind, telling you right. that it's something other than right. Yahweh that can save you. Telling you that right. it's something else that you need to be doing rather than waiting on Yahweh. All that's all of those things are strange doctrines. Read. 
We have an altar where uh, they have no they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, Yahshua also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffereth without the gate, outside the gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Mm -hmm. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to Yahweh continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That's the fruit. That's what you do with the fruit. When you right. go down and be placed in a place that you have no way out whatsoever. I'm not talking about bills. I'm talking about a mental state. Right. I'm talking about you go down into a mental state where you have no way out. When y'all will stop speaking to you and you have no way out. And y'all will bring you through it with the knowledge and understanding that the reason he did that to you is because he loves you. And when you find out how much Yahweh loves you, then it, it causes you to love him back. And the way you love him is by obeying him. Obey. But you right. go down, and then he talked about Joseph, all the things that Joseph went through, he was innocent. He didn't right. do nothing to his brothers for them to sell him down there. He didn't right. try to sleep with Porter for his wife when he got thrown in prison. And the things that we do, knowing we ain't supposed to be doing them, what you think Yahweh is supposed to do? Why are you acting like you're surprised because you're going through hell all the time? Without a mm -hmm. mess that you keep on doing and not doing. What is what is wrong with you? Right. That's Yahweh's love. All of the children of Yahweh that he loves, he chastises them. Yeah. Because look, when you if you sleep, my nephew, mm -hmm. have mercy. When he sleeps, he dies. You can <laughs> hollow his name in his ear drum. He will not budge. But you have to <laughs> shake him to wake him up. So Yahweh we talked about last Sunday. Yahweh calls you by your name. Mm -hmm. You still act like you came here. So if you came here, you can feel. We got to set you up so you can wake up. That's uh -huh. what we're shaking you up for. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to keep on shaking them, shaking them, shaking them, shaking them, shaking them. Because if you shake them and they wake up a little bit, they're going to go back to sleep. That's why you got to keep on shaking them. That's why some of you keep on going through, going through, going through, going through, going through. Because you haven't woke up yet. You're still looking at people, places and things is messing with you. You still right. ain't woke up yet. <clears throat> you say one minute out your mouth, I know y'all will see Yahweh. That's what's going on for this. And you lose consciousness again. Go back to sleep again. We got to keep shaking you because you can't hear. But you can feel. But when you wake up and realize who and what you are, what you going to do? You're going to give Yahweh all the praise, glory, and honor. So the fruit, mm -hmm. of your, the fruit that you produce from going up and down, up and down, up and down. The fruit that you produce are the fruit of your lips by giving Yahweh the honor, the glory, and the praise. That is the purpose of Yahweh all in a nutshell. The whole right. purpose in which he did everything the way that he did it in the natural is only a reflection of the spirit. It's just the types and shadows of the spirit. It's for Yahweh to glorify himself. By reconciling all things back to himself through Yahshua the Messiah. Right. That is the whole purpose of it. And so when you're going down, praise Yahweh. When you're going up, praise Yahweh. When you all go right. down again, praise Yahweh. Mm -hmm. when you go, so until it gets to a point where you can boldly declare, Yahweh is my help. Mm -hmm. And him and him only I will wait on. And you see the salvation of Yahweh right there in yourself, not the things that's going on. Yahweh can still cause things to be going on and you still be saved in your own mind where you have peace in your own mind, even though he hadn't worked out the, the physical part of it yet. You got right. peace now with the situation. Right. Oh, that's I right. still ain't got no job or no car, but Yahweh didn't show me what this is all about. I'm, I'm good now. I don't even need no car, no job now. I'm good. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the mm -hmm. spiritual is good, then the, that's when the physical catches up with it. Right. Do you right. not realize the pattern? Adam died first, seriously so. 
and it took 9 to 30 years for the body to catch up with it. That's okay. why you ain't got no peace yet outwardly because you ain't got it inwardly yet. You haven't obtained the things that y'all would promise you inwardly yet, so you can't obtain them outwardly yet. When you accept the presence thereof right there in you, that Yahweh has declared the end from the beginning, even the small things that you ask Yahweh for, when you can accept them in your spirit and know that Yahweh has already worked it out, then the physical will catch up to that. But until then and until then only, you're going to keep on going through the same mess over and over and over again. Because the spirit is first. The physical is second. Get it together in your mind first. And then the physical will catch up. You have to be healed inwardly first in your mind. You have to know that Yahweh has already healed you. You have to know that Yahweh has already given you the things you have asked him for. You have to know that Yahweh has already made a way out of no way. And mm -hmm. then the physical will catch up. Right. I pray and I hope that something has been said this morning to want to wake you up to get you to start looking at Yahweh, not just when we in class for these two hours and you forget about it all. No. Ask Yahweh for the desire to learn of him. Ask him for the desire to let these things go and to focus more on him, to please him, not yourself. And I guarantee you that once your heart is set on pleasing Yahweh, then all the things that you wanted, Yahweh will bring them to you without you even wanting them anymore. Like, oh, I forgot I even asked for that, Yahweh. I'm, that's cool. You won't even want it no more once you get it because you'll be so focused on Yahweh. Like, oh, that's cool, but I'd rather stay here. I don't want to come down again for nothing. You're going to make down, though. But it's the up and down, up and down, but you go down with a conscience and the knowledge and understanding this time. First time you go down, you go down without knowledge. You come back up with knowledge. So when you go back down again, you have some knowledge and understanding of what to look forward to. You know the process now. You know what it takes now. And it's all good. All of it is. I, I'm thoroughly convinced in my own mind that Yahweh is above all, through all, and in us all. And that's all. I hope you've gotten something out of class today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Okay, six to me. Thank you. That's right. Okay, y'all got some scripts over in the room today. All right. Um, that concludes class. Are there any comments? Any questions? I enjoy it. Uh oh, my text. Okay. Are right, the comments or questions? Let me take them. Let me take them. Let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to take them. I mean, uh, you see. All right. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on YouTube? If you did have a question, can you retype it for me, please? Because I cannot scroll all the way up. And while y'all doing that, I'm going to go ahead and conclude with the um, announcements. All right, the announcements are the same. We have class every Sunday, 10 a.m. to noon Central Time. And we do stream live on YouTube. All right. Um, our website is soulfood.org, S-O-H-L-F-O-O-D.org. That is the same website to register for our event. If you want to join us live on YouTube or have any questions you would like for us to ask and answer during class, you can email us at meridiansoul, S-O-H-L, at gmail.com or I-D-M-R, meridiansms, at gmail.com. We'll gladly go through and answer the questions after class. Um, our event also is coming up. Uh, registration will close in, I'm looking at the registration date. 
So we're coming up on the close of registration. So if you have not registered, go ahead and register as soon as you can. Um, but the event is going to be June 20th through the 23rd in Gulfport, Mississippi. It's Soul Food Presents the Mississippi Soul Food Gathering. It's free to register. There is an international airport at Gulfport, Mississippi. GPT is the um, airport code. There will be um, transportation to and from the airport in Gulfport to the event or to the hotels. And to reserve your room to the hotels, we have the group rate at two different hotels that are on the site of the um, event center. And they are also on the website, soulfood.org. You can go ahead and call the number that's on the website to reserve your room for either one of those um, locations. The Best Western is pet friendly. You can also bring your pets, and it also offers um, complimentary breakfast. And then the Holiday Inn um, is on the other side of the event center. You really don't need a car unless you plan on going to the beaches or the casinos, which is about 20 minutes away. If not, all the shopping, food places, and um, things like that are within walking distance of the event center and the hotels. Um, I think that's all of the announcements. We will not have class the weekend of the Chicago event, which is the 10th or the 15th of April. Um, we will be attending, or I, we will be attending the Chicago event. If any of the members of the reading class want to have class, you're more than welcome to. You have access to the Zoom and the slides and things like that, you can definitely do that. If not, we'll be back the following weekend. But our event starts June 20th through the 23rd. I do want to have a meeting at some point with, with the Meridian class to um, go through some of the details of the event, who plans to attend, who plans to help um, with the event, so forth and so on. So we'll try to do that um, probably next weekend. Yeah, probably next weekend. Um, but I'll send out a text message to everybody. Let's see. They're just adding the etymology of placenta is flat face. Wow. And for an um, amnion, it is little lamb. So in fourth Egypt was a birth. Wow. Okay. Very good. Flat cake and little lamb. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, cool, cool. If there are no other comments, no um, questions, we'll conclude with the doxology. Thank you from the last two verses of the book of Jude. <clears throat> now, to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Good day, hallelujah. everyone. All right. Good day. All right. My children, y'all jump right back on for me. Uh -oh. Okay. Okay. Is that going to close it?